You are listening to The Vault Cast, the official podcast of the B-Movie Film Vault, with your hosts, Jordan Garrett and Silent Steve Oldford. Ba, 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 you like that? <laughs> Alright, this is Silent Steve. And this is Jordan, and... We are in a car. Yeah, this is so, a uh, mobile podcast. It is a mobile podcast. We had a long drive today. We're going to a secret... Is it, should I say secret? Well, it, the secret is still a secret. Okay, uh, we're, we're going we're, to a showing of a movie that... No, no, is just, you've said too much already. We're in trouble. What? No. <laughs> we're going to go watch a movie. We're going <laughs> to watch a movie. Let's just say we're going to watch a movie, and it's going to take us a while to get there. And so since we're on the road, we will talk about something that we kind of wanted to talk about for a while, but it was pointless, and that is Game of Thrones. Because up until now, everyone was literally on the same page. True. And now no one's on the same page because there are no pages. Yep. And uh, uh, I think it's good to speculate now. It's a lot more fun to speculate because there isn't somebody like saying, oh, well, I read the book. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I read the books and they did it a little bit differently in the TV show. So all, like, um, if unless you have watched any of uh, Game of Thrones up to season six, episode two, I would say go ahead and stop listening. Yeah, this is going to be a bit spoiler That's gonna We're going to jump right in with the biggest spoiler, which is... Should we, like, count? Do we give them a count so they turn this off quick? <laughs> they turned you knew it off this, already! You knew this was going to happen yeah. at, by the time season five ended. Yeah, that's, that's the ironic thing. And, yeah, five, four, three, two, one, stop. Anyway, yeah, yeah uh... Just say it. Just say it. John Snow, John Snow alive. came back to life. Yeah. Yes. And it was the least surprising uh, of all the surprising deaths. Ironically, the least surprising thing on this show so far was someone returning to life. Yes. I wasn't shocked at all. It felt like it, that would happen because they put they built up the Red Woman like searching for her like the Lord of Light, searching for her faith and all that. She yeah. ran into the guy who could bring people back from the dead, or at least his friend. Yeah. So the curiosity was there, the possibility was there, all the elements were there. It wasn't surprising that he was gonna come back from the dead. He's not exactly the character I would like to come back from the dead, but whatever. I mean like that's you kinda have to deal with it. He's at this kind point. of integral to the whole thing because there's a theory that I yeah. came, that I came up with and I looked online, I'm like, oh shit, okay. Other people beat me to the punch because that's the beauty of the internet. Yeah, is that Jon Snow is actually a Targaryen, but he Ned has... Stark was not his father. Ned Stark watched over him. He claimed that Jon was his bastard, but I think he's a Targaryen rape baby. Why is he have black hair? That's the Stark in him. You just said it. That okay, rewind back to <laughs> rewind before. Rewind back to before you Be- said Ned was his Rewind back to father. before episode one of Game of Thrones. Everybody yeah. keeps talking about this war that happened with the Mad King. Yes. And how he kidnapped Ned Stark's sister, which started the war. Robert Baratheon said, let's go get her. But I'm pretty sure the Mad King got down with Ned's sister and she had a baby. And it was him? And it no, but why is he not white of hair? I mean, that was the whole angle. Because with... the seed is strong. I don't know. I don't write this. No, the seed is strong was... Was, uh... was Baratheon. No, that was... Well, the, that was the the hand that got killed. Yeah, but that's because Baratheon's kids all had black hair. All right, we're, we're, you're starting to confuse me with this already. Right, but anyway, okay, so that's just my theory, and many other people think that John is uh, Targaryen. All right, well, here's my theory. Okay, go, give us your theory. I, I think he is Ned's son, okay, because there's just too much they lined up for him not to be Ned's son. Uh, who his mother is at this point, I don't know. I don't think she was a Targaryen, though. No. That wouldn't make sense to me. Like, okay, like, even even Robert mentioned that uh, he couldn't remember her name, yeah. and, but he did. they did say her name. It's the only time they said her name was season one. Yeah. I can't even remember it. But, like, you know, they're sitting there, they're drinking and talking about it. So even Robert knew it was Ned's son. You know, the father of your bastard. I mean, the mother yeah. of your bastard. Yeah. So I, I don't think... I, th- I think it's Ned's, and I would want it to be Ned's son because, or it. I want, I want John to be Ned's son. He's a warg. Because the thing that's propelling this entire show is Ned's death. I mean, you, you really get to like Ned. You see, he's a righteous person in this unrighteous world. He dies for no good reason. Mm-hmm. And honestly, for like three seasons after that, his death is what holds everything up. Yeah. It's it's the point of the war. It's well, the yeah, reason so, you want Joffrey dead. Yeah. 
And I mean, every narrative motivation revolves around his death. For for John not to be his son would not give the viewer any retribution. Mm. Now, he may do that because what worries me, and this is what I was talking about before we hit record here, yeah. is that as I was watching it, because I've been re-watching it because, yeah. you know, and I made the joke, I see dead people. <laughs> I've been re-watching it to uh, see things that maybe I missed, like that are connected later on. And there's a lot, actually. I was surprised at how much I couldn't connect to what was going to happen. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just little things, like the arcs that are, they're setting up, and some of them that were stunted. I, I, I could kind of see where the story was going where before I couldn't, only because I saw where it ended up, mm. which sounds confusing. <laughs> anyway... Well, and who do you think Jon Snow's mother is? I don't think we know. I don't think there's enough clues yet. Do you think she was like a witch or something? Yeah. No, no. I guess no. Ned, well, you, who would Ned have sex with? This is the question you have to ask yourself. You have to be a- he wouldn't. It's it's like uh, what's mentioned uh, a few seasons later, you know. Ned wouldn't just, you know, it wouldn't be some tavern wench. No, you no. Know, for Ned to actually be unfaithful to his wife. So it was definitely royalty. I would think he, uh, yeah, I think he has more than more than just Ned's king's blood in him. Yeah. Narratively, he's extremely important. I understand why he has to come back. It's just there are more likable characters because I'm so tired. It, it isn't. It isn't Kit Harrington's fault, really. I'm just so tired of the un, the the reluctant hero thing. Well, I think he's going to embrace that role fully now that he's alive again. I I hope so. I yeah. hope he just starts cracking heads right away. Honestly. Do you think, okay. Do you think he's going to get retribution on the men that stabbed him to death? Do you think he's going to hang them, even the kid? Well, okay. Let's go back to the guy who does rise from the dead every time. Uh, the guy that fights the uh, the hound. Remember that? Uh, he fights the hound. The hound beats him, but then the guy prays him back to life. That guy. Oh, uh, s- s- uh, sir. Oh, shit. I have a hard time with all these names. Thoros of Mir... No, that was the... No, I know you're talking about. The Lightning Lord. Uh, I can't remember his actual name. But yeah, the hound kills him, cuts him in half, basically, with a flaming sword. And, and then the guy yeah, is and the guy brought back to life. brought back to life. And the hound runs off. Well, let's go back to that. That guy actually says... Every time I come back, I lose a little bit of myself. Mm. So I'm wondering what John... I'm hoping what John lost was his loyalty to the wall. Because at this point, like, there is no loyalty. What are you loyal to? There's not enough guys there to actually defend what's coming. Yeah. And the actual guys who should have def- supported him as Lord Commander did not. Yeah. So, like, the, the entire Castle Black thing should be abandoned at this point. Because what John really needs to do is take command and tell everybody, hey, we're about to all die from this thing that's coming from the north. Well, I thought he made that perfectly clear, but they weren't there to see what he saw. No, they weren't there, but that that's just a group of idiots, though. Yeah. I mean, you can't really, like... Oh, well, that's it's age-old uh, at this hatred point, for somebody. Yes, and at this point, I'm interested... I, I want John to get away from the wall because... The best part of Game of Thrones, and the reason season five, I don't want to say worse because it's a continuing story, mm. but it was, I don't even want to say disappointed. It just didn't have the oomph yeah. that the other seasons did. And yeah. that's because you didn't, ever, so many people were dead by then that you didn't have characters interacting with each yeah, other. They really thinned out the cast. They thinned out the cast so much that everybody was very nebulous and they were all doing their own thing. So it's like, well, it, it's. It wasn't until, you know, it wasn't until, uh, what was uh, the White Walkers, they killed that whole village. Oh, the, the big battle? Hardhome. Was that it? Hardhome? Yeah, I think it was Hardhome. Okay. Alright, so anyway, Hardhome. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until that very episode when you had John doing what he was doing, but also you had uh, Daenerys meeting Tyrion. Yes. That was the best episode because that is the heart of what makes... Game of Thrones interesting is these characters that you don't think would ever see each other or interact yeah. finally interact and you it, it's almost like destiny once they start talking to each other <laughs> and that that's what was always great about the show like there's an element of destiny to it that 
that makes the dialogue and the interactions great. And there was a lot of that missing from season five just because there's so many dead people, you know? <laughs> so I'm hoping they get back to that. I'm hoping, I'm a little worried about Daenerys being off with, um, yeah. is that it well, seems repetitive, but it's also like, well, now she's far away again. Well, this time she's not like a sexual object. She's not to be touched. No, she's, and she's being put into retirement, basically. Her dragon's still out there. Yes. And I, what I will say about this season so far, even though we're just two episodes in, it does like feel like it's lost George's touch because George, um, even though it's borderline misogynistic, well, it's not even borderline, it's very misogynistic <laughs> and at times very decadent, but his dialogue that he had for some of those characters was just amazing. Yeah. And without, I'm just worried without them basing it off of a book where they can just pull that dialogue from the page, yeah. that it's going to feel a little off. But well, he's heavily involved with the creation of the show, right? So. Well, yeah, but I mean, is he really going to tell them what characters are going to be saying, or is he going to be he, writing his book? He's he might have the whole manuscript done, and they're just taking pictures. No, oh, if that manuscript was done, it would be published. The manuscript is not done. He's sadistic with the I story. Think he's, he's sadistic in real life. I think life. he's. I, I think <laughs> he didn't know how popular it would get. It's a slow boil of a story. I think yeah. he wanted to take time with it, and they just they've passed him. I think that's all that's happened. I don't think it's like any kind of conspiracy here. I would be surprised at this point if he even gets the book for this season out by season seven. Mm. Just because he takes so long now. Yeah. Um, but that, that's another that's another thing. I mean, I don't want to rush the guy. But the point I'm trying to make is that like his, his dialogue is amazing, and I'm worried that you're going to lose that now. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. Neither do I. I'm looking at signs here. Yeah, he's trying to drive while we're talking, so... <laughs> if Jordan seems a little diminished... No. I'm trying not to crash while we discuss Game of Thrones. All right, so I'll go ahead and you sort of said John's story. What do you, you have an overarching theory, which I think is pretty good, and well, I don't, how the whole thing's going to yeah, end. Yeah, how the whole how do you think okay, the whole well, thing's going to end? Well, uh, here, you know what? Here's what I want to discuss. They introduced a new character um, who's in the book. He's in book five, and uh, he just showed up and offed his brother to take over the Iron Islands, which is Euron Greyjoy. Euron Greyjoy. Euron, yeah. But uh, he's a character in the books that popped up in the... I think he popped up in the last book. Well, the, yeah, the Iron Islands were largely ignored. There. Yes. Yeah. Um, he shows up when the king mysteriously dies, which they show him killing the king, so that kind of connected the dots for me for the book. But now they're going to do this thing called the King's Moot, where the Iron Islanders are going to pick who rules them. Yeah. You also have... Uh, what's his face? He doesn't have a penis anymore. Uh, Theon. Nobody, yeah. nobody knows he's still alive. Yeah, nobody knows he's alive, and he's going back. And he's going. He said he's going home. We don't know which home he means. Does he mean home to Ramsay to be tortured and killed, or does he mean home to the Iron Islands, where uh, I he think won't accept go, him either? I think he'll go to the Iron Islands. Or will he go and hide up? No, no. Uh, he won't. Iron Islands. I think it's the Iron Islands. I would hope it's that way because going back to Ramsay would just end in his death. But he may end up like he's supposed to be the heir, but. Now that uh, the king's dead, I mean, his brother might kill him out of turn just to make sure to solidify his spot for the throne. Okay, well, remind me of Ramsay in just a few minutes. You're, you're missing. You're missing what the how you think it's going to end, which is what I want you to say. Which okay. is what I think you're the most accurate on. Okay, I think that this entire story will end with Daenerys having to kill her dragons. Yep, I, I would agree with you on that. I think the wall is going to come down, or they're just going to break through somewhere. And then uh, you have the Army of the Dead just slowly working their way through all of Westeros. I think they're going to see some awesome battles where, like, between using dragon glass weaponry and the actual dragons to, like, kind of burn well, and them away. Valer then Valerian Steel. And Valer I think we're going to see some amazing battles, and I think they're going to, like, push the undead army back. But in the end, I think Daenerys is going to have to make the choice to kill her dragons because their birth is what brought all the magic out of Westeros. But... Magic started coming before their birth, though. I think their birth was tied to that comet that came by. Oh, so you think this is a, a Night of the Living Dead scenario where a comet passing by Earth three and the There's a lot of scenarios that we can do here. <laughs> I mean, there's there's the joke about John where your friend is not dead; he is just mostly dead. <laughs> you know, <it's>, uh, <laughs> which well, that, is how it feels sometimes. And, and, and what's funny is I was making. Um, about Oberlin, I was making uh, Inigo Montoya jokes about him. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So I'm thinking either George is a huge Princess Bride fan <laughs> and somehow it leaked into his work. <laughs> or, no, that that's, that is. So it's this uh, uh, Game of Thrones is going to end like Princess Bride. There's going to be a giant that catches a woman out of the window. <laughs> well, oh, wing wing? wing, wing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is a giant. It is Princess Bride. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We've unlocked it. <laughs> Anybody who wants to know about Game of Thrones, just watch Princess Bride. All there, there just needs to be a six finger band now. Uh, and rodents of unusual size. Yes. <laughs> nah, okay, so I would agree with you for the most part. I, okay. I do think the dragons dying is the big part. The I dragons think, are going to have, have to die. I think she'll have to kill them. The, you think that because I think it feels like she... She makes the ultimate sacrifice to save her kingdom. She kills her It children. feels like the dramatic thing, okay? Yeah, yeah. But I think up until this point, what George has shown us, uh, uh, how he tells stories... Mm -hmm. Is that whoever you actually think is going to do something is not the person who's going to do it. That's true. Okay? Yeah. I, more than, who did you really want Joffrey to die from? Who, who did you want him to be killed by more than uh. anyone? Because it sure wasn't uh, the old lady who was trying to get her daughter to marry. Uh, either Tyrion or Sansa, because they both had the biggest reasons to off him. I was rooting for Arya. I wanted Arya to come oh, back yeah. and stab him right in yep. the neck with needle. Yep. And what's funny is when you watch season one, she had a chance to kill him and save her father, and she yep. didn't even know it, because obviously none of that had come to pass. Oh, uh, hi there. Just cut right in front of me. Thank you. Yes, cut in front of us. This is all live. <laughs> if we die... These are our final these words. These are our final words, everyone. Okay. <laughs> um, so what I'm saying is, I mean... Obviously, Joffrey didn't, even though you were happy he died, yeah. and he died in a miserable way. He didn't die at easy. the hands of person. He didn't die off at the hands of the person that anybody wanted. Yeah. That's how Jar George, Ooh. what? That's how George operates. Uh, another another theory I have about maybe this season or next. Yeah. Uh, the Hound is still alive. Yeah. Everybody's well, I've heard everybody off. talk about, everybody who's read the books talk about the Gravedigger guy. But you haven't seen him yet I know. in the story. I think they're, I think he's going to come back in a big way and have like a huge, awesome showdown with his zombie brother. Within, uh, which would be awesome if they actually do it, within the realm of the, of the show, mm -hmm. okay, let's avoid the books for a moment. Okay. Within the realm of the show, I would say what makes me think he's alive is that, do you remember before the big f fight between him and uh, Brienne? The yeah. end of Darth... Uh, before all that, their horses were missing. Yeah. Someone had to have taken their horses. Yep. So there are people living around there who might have found him. So that's the possibility where he's alive. I don't know if they'll work in the grave digger guy or what they're going to do there with that. Yeah. Because you want him to be alive. And he, he's one of the only characters that is just hinted at dying, not mm -hmm. shown dying. Oh, yeah. You just assume he's dead with his uh, broken leg. You know. The only other one they really did that, even though... It was the season uh, ender there where everybody died on season five uh, when uh, Stannis. Mm. You didn't see it. Yeah. And I was wondering, honestly, I was, I was telling my wife afterward, I was like, you know, what if, what if she just, like, because it's not an honorable death, what if she just, like, hit the tree above his head or something? Yeah. But I guess he's dead. I don't know. I don't think she would have walked away from him. She would have had him in chains or something. So he's dead. More than likely. If not, then... And the daughter who was poisoned... I wasn't sure if she was, because I thought uh, Braun might have had, like there were there were so many that could have died or not died on yeah. that last episode, and I wasn't sure if it was the creator's decision or if they just didn't know where George was going. So, yeah, there's that. And there's definitely going to be a war now between uh, the Lannisters and Dorne. I think Dorne's going to rise up now and... The, well, the whole Dorne storyline is right now is just what is going on there. Just like uh, a hostile takeover. What's funny from that episode uh, where the sand snakes kill the sun is they're knocking on the door and he says, "I'm not hungry." Oh, no, he goes, "I told you I'm not hungry," which means they've already been trying to poison it. <laughs> Probably, yeah. They've already been trying to poison it. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then they just come in and kill him. Yeah. Like, you know what was? The weird thing about the Dorn storyline is none of those people seem to matter. It wasn't like anyone was projecting that king, the wheelchair king, mm. to like be some kind of uh, big person in the storyline. So when he died, there was no like... Uh, you didn't feel anything for him. You didn't feel anything he for big, him. He wasn't a big character. Not even sure. Well, you're not even sure what storyline ended there. 
You know, well, I mean, he wanted to keep the peace. He wanted to keep them locked up. And so he wanted to do work. nothing. Yes. So like you killed a guy who was going to do nothing, which is not the kind of death you expect from Game of yeah. Thrones. Well, he wanted to keep them from going to war. He was trying to protect his own people. But now, that's over with. Yeah. Dorne's coming at some point. Just like Daenerys is coming at some point. After she gets back to Marine and retakes it. I think she's going to come back with the whole Kalisar behind her and riding on her fucking dragon. That'd be great. That's going to be the season ender. Well, you're getting farther ahead than George yeah. has, yeah. I, honestly. I, the reason I like your dragon theory the best is because it's the one that, like, it's the one where the story will end. Yeah. Everything going up to that point is so sidewinding, and it's just the way he tells the story. And I like it. He makes it really complicated, and all the motivations seem real, mm -hmm. which is why the story is good. It has nothing to do with the dragons or, you know... Or the breasts. Or the breasts. It, it has nothing to do with what uh, Ian McShane said. The really complicated storylines, the interesting dialogue, the character motivations, it's all very interesting. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't even know how Robin of the Vale is going to factor into this. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot about that little bastard. Or Littlefinger. Or Where's Littlefinger. He at? Yeah, I mean, like, the, the, you have some of these interesting characters that are pushing everything forward. Yeah, we still... It makes it feel like a real lived-in universe. We it's haven't very seen well anything about Rickon at all. I heard, since we're already talking spoiler crazy, he's yeah. coming back this season. Oh, okay. And he's a little more grown up, hopefully a little less petulant. He would have to be, because we haven't seen him since season three. That's true. And he still has his uh, dire wolf name, uh, what, Shaggy Dog? Is that what he's called Scooby. It? Scooby Doo. <laughs> So, uh, how are we going to wrap this up? Um, uh, who oh. do we want to see die? Uh, that's an interesting question, Jordan. I'm glad you posed that to me. And uh, right, number one on my list in everybody's is Ramsey at this point. Ramsey, all right. Like, Joffrey was just a sniveling little shit, and he did the worst thing by killing Ned. Yeah. But, but he was just a fucking prick to everybody. He treated everyone like shit. He didn't take anything into account. It was just his whim. Ramsey, on the other hand, just insane. Ramsey is... Cold and calculated. Cold, calculated, psychopathic. Honestly, that is one of the worst things I've seen in any Game of Thrones episode when he let the dogs loose on the baby. Yeah. The only thing that maybe tops that is... The Red Wedding. No. No? No, the part that made me cringe the most is when the one baby gets taken to the White Walkers and it just touch, touches the baby's cheek and you see its eyes... Turn blue. Turn blue. Like, that was so creepy to me. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, oh, gosh. Because, I mean, that's a human being that never had a chance to grow up. Like, totally got turned into a White Walker without any, like, individuality. And now or it's yeah. ice, ice, baby. Yeah. I, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I had to get one in. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah, but that was pretty awful, the dogs. Tara, Tara, I was watching it with Tara, and, and, uh, my fiance. And she, she held out this hope for a second. That maybe she'll just take the baby and then feed her to the dogs. I'm like, When he handed the baby back, yeah. I was like, maybe he'll do the right thing. And then he took her in there, and I'm like, he's going to do precisely the wrong thing. Yep. Yeah, th that's the thing, though. How long did it take Joffrey to die after you wanted him dead? Like, it may take while. forever. It won't even be satisfying by the time... It makes, me, it makes me wonder who's going to deal the blow, because he's wronged so many people in the show. It could be anybody. Yeah. You know, it was like Joffrey. It could. It, he pissed so many people off. It could have been anybody that did it. And it was just anybody that did it. I, who do I want dead next? I don't know. As long as it isn't, it isn't Hodor, who, like, Hodor... Yeah, there's a flashback where Hodor can actually Hodor talk. was gone all of season five. Yeah, and Hodor. I was missing him. Yeah. For a guy who just says the same thing, everything he says matters. <laughs> <laughs> It's it in, really does. It's in the way he says Hodor. I, I still laugh, like, when he says it sometimes. Like, when he looks down the well and he goes, Hodor! <laughs> or when... <laughs> because he's about to talk and you know what he's going to say, but there's that moment where, like, maybe he won't say Hodor. No, he said it again. So, yeah, he was missing from last... He's the heart of the show. <laughs> and if, if George Martin kills him, I will find him wherever he's hiding. <laughs> I will find him wherever he's hiding. I have a particular set of skills. Yes. Yes, I do. I will they, find you. They involve choking out fat men. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, we only got a minute or so. We got to go. This is our fast, very fast podcast. Yeah. Uh, I liked it. It was worth it for yeah. what it was. 
Um, so, yeah, thanks for listening. Keep watching Game of Thrones on the HBO. Yes, and when we put this on YouTube, if you have theories that are interesting, yes. write them down there. Like, I want to, I, I like the theories. I like the talking about it, especially now when no one knows what's going to happen. It's all Let's, a mystery. Yeah, it's all a mystery. Let's talk about what's going to happen. All right, guys? All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.